One of the really cool things about getting math books is that you never know what you're gonna find inside. Sometimes you find signatures, sometimes you find notes. In this case, I found something super hardcore. So this book is called Logarithmic and Trigonometric Tables. And it says United States Naval Institute. Just so you know, I actually found an exam in this book. That's right. There is a super hardcore math exam in this book, along with really, really strict directions for test taking, which I want to show you, which I think it's really interesting. I think it's just very, very, um, I, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Hardcore? Wait, wait till you see it. All right, let's go ahead and open up this book and explore what's inside. There's actually some really strange and interesting things in this book. So on the inside flap, we have this here, and it says mathematics department order. Entries will not be made in the logarithmic and trigonometric tables unless all midshipmen are authorized and directed in writing by a head of department to make such entries. So basically you can use this book during exams and they don't want you to write in it because they don't know what you'll write in it. They do allow the following though, underlining or use of index tabs are not considered unauthorized entries under this order. If any entries are found in the above book at the time of an examination or test, it will be considered a violation of US Naval Academy regulations, hardcore. This order shall be pasted on the inside of the front cover of your copy of the logarithmic and trigonometric tables. And here it's signed DM White, Captain USN, Head of Department of Mathematics, super cool. And DM White really cares about correctness as he should make the following corrections in a logarithmic and trigonometric tables. So there's some corrections here that should be made. Pretty cool. The copyright is 1945 and this was reprinted in 1954 by the US Naval Institute. And this was printed in the United States of America. The contents are relatively short, explanation of tables, and then it's got some logarithms of numbers, logarithms of trig functions, values of trig functions, and then four place logarithms of secant and cosecant. So here's where it gives you an explanation of how to actually use the tables in this book. And it goes through and explains it. And I would say that it's not like something that you could just read and learn really quickly it's gonna take some effort to, to actually learn how to use this book. Here they give you some worked examples of how to use the tables. I just feel really fortunate that we have calculators today so we can use calculators instead of having to do all of these manual computations using this book. Yeah, pretty cool. All right, before I show you the test and the instructions, let me just show you some of the book. So you see here we have logarithms of numbers. I mean, just so many tables. It's basically just a book of tables that you can use to compute values of logs, logs of trig functions. Smells really good. I gotta give it a whiff, just one second. Uh, it's a piece of history, you know, it's really cool because it's like, you know, from the United States government and it's real, it's like a real book and it's got a real test in it. And let's just look at the back here to show you some more stuff in the back, just more tables. It's all pretty much tables. Okay, let's take a look at the directions for the test and the actual test itself. All right, so these are the directions for the test. Let's take a close look at these directions. Imagine getting these directions before taking a test and having to read all this before you take a test. I honestly think I would feel very nervous. So it says 106, room 14, Ballard. I'm not sure who Ballard is or what that is. Department of Mathematics, instructions for term examinations. Read before commencing work on your examination. All right, number one. Do not start work on the examination until ordered to do so by the instructor in charge. Okay, pretty straightforward. For question one, use sheet of examination paper that is stamped mathematics. All right, so they're giving you some examination paper, which I don't have, unfortunately. Three, oh, they underline this one. Start each question on a new sheet of examination paper. Okay, so one question per sheet. <laughs> There's more directions. On each sheet of examination paper, which you use, write your name on the first line, Write the question number on the second line midway between the side lines of the sheet. Huh, very specific directions. On any one sheet of examination paper, put smooth work and scratch work for one question only. If you do not attempt a question, turn in sheet for it anyway. Have your name and the question number at the top. Wow, seven. At the end of the examination, arrange your sheets in the order of the questions with questions one on top. Eight. Do not remove any used or unused examination paper from your desk. 
Nine, you are cautioned that the unauthorized use of any material brought to the examination for the purpose of aiding you is a serious disciplinary offense. So basically they don't want you to bring anything in other than your mind and a pencil and I guess your logarithm book. If you inadvertently brought any unauthorized material with you, turn it in to your proctor immediately. 10. You are authorized to take these mimeographed instructions and examination questions from the exam room. So we have authorization to look at this, even though it's a government document. <laughs> According to rule number 10, we are okay. And here it's signed F.S. Rixey, Captain, U.S. Navy, Head of Department of Mathematics. Wow, this is a piece of history here. All right, so imagine reading these instructions, right? Imagine sitting down and reading these, you know, you're taking a test, you've got your logarithms book, your pencil, and now you've got to take the exam. Wait till you see this test. Regular examination, second class mathematics. So you have two hours and 30 minutes. First term is from 58 to 59. And I guess this is the 23rd of January in 1959. Note for steel, and they tell you E equals 30 million PSI. So let's look at number one. For a right spherical triangle ABC, use Napier's rules and write formulas for finding trigonometric functions of A and C, each in terms of A and B. Wow, okay. And then here it wants you to use the law of cosines and compute by slide rule the great circle distance in nautical miles from a flight from R, let me give you some coordinates there, to Q. Hardcore. Hardcore. I mean, look at this. It's just a test full of word problems. I mean, it's all word problems. It says problems 7, 8, 9, and 10 will be found on page 2. So there's more, right? So after you read those directions, you've got your logarithms book, and, you know, you sit down, and this is what you encounter, and you have two and a half hours to do all of these questions, right? No calculator, right? No calculator at all. Then there's more. Look at this. I mean, it just gets better. As shown in the accompanying figure, a cantilever beam neglects its weight. L feet long carries a concentrated load of P pound at its free end. Using the axis shown on the figure, so they give you a figure, which I guess was drawn by hand, right? This is, I believe, before computers, so, um, I mean, I really don't know much about computers in the past, but it's pretty cool they have some illustrations. Write the differential equation of the elastic curve of the beam. Give the conditions necessary to solve the particular solution, the differential equation, right? They want the particular solution here. C, find the equation of the elastic curve by solving the differential equation. D, find the maximum deflection in inches of the beam if the beam is steel. And they give you some numbers there. So the problem with questions like this is that if you mess up the first part, you're in trouble. And there's a lot of questions like that that are dependent. A lot of times, you know, there's a dependency in the questions. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Note, after finishing the examination solutions may be seen in room 11, building 133 or room 202 Mari Hall. So I went on the online and I actually found um, an image of what Mari Hall looks like. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. So that's what Mari Hall should look like in that era, right? In this era of time. So pretty, pretty interesting test, pretty hardcore exam. I just can't imagine, you know, the stress and how hard this must be for students, you know, who, took these classes, you know, back, back in the, you know, 50s. So that's some really interesting stuff, I think. I just thought I would make a short video to show you these really cool treasures that I found in this old book. These directions, which are extremely precise and strict. I guess it's the Navy, right? They don't mess around. It's the United States government. And then this test is completely uh, insane, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know what kind of lectures they had and how that worked, but there's a lot of knowledge here that is not taught in, in regular math classes. I mean, the class is called second class mathematics, but you can see it's mostly just applied math. Pretty cool. I just thought I would share. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck and take care.